Hey, Sleepy Sheepy here. Today we're going to be looking at zoning, spacing, and timing. So these three concepts are often thrown around when people are new to PvP and other people suggest that they just get better at zoning, spacing, and timing. So these three concepts together are not like the only three introductory concepts, but they are ones that I think are useful to talk about in the context of some educational PvP content. So I'd like to first just define what these things mean. So they're all kind of things that you might do intuitively if you just play this game in PvP for a period of time. It's also something that comes up in PvE, but it's a little bit less important in that context. So taking a look at zoning first, zoning is basically a tactic that you employ where you prevent an opponent from going in a certain area. It's basically just controlling the space around you. And this is going to be really important when you're invading because you're often going to be outnumbered. So if you have no control over the space around you, you're frequently going to get hit by lots of different attacks and die rather quickly. The next thing I want to talk about is going to be spacing. So this is going to be how you approach your opponent when you kind of go in for attacks and how you utilize the space around you. So it's connected to zoning, but usually much more closely related to aggression and defense within kind of the give and take of a fight. And it's also very closely tied to timing because how you space, how you time are very interconnected. If you space and time well, then you'll be likely to deliver hits and not get hit in the process. If you do one or the other poorly, you may, you know, deliver a hit but still get hit on your end, which is trading, which is a whole other thing. But spacing, timing, and zoning are all going to be very useful concepts to just be aware of going into invasions as well as duels. And it's going to be something that we're going to look at in pretty close detail in this video. Before jumping into the invasion based examples, I do want to mention that we're not going to be running this Fike Spear build. We are going to be running a couple different builds, and they're all just going to provide different elements of context for discussing spacing, zoning, as well as timing. And I also wanted to mention if you wouldn't mind considering subscribing, I'd definitely appreciate it. But yeah, let's go ahead and jump into the invasions. All right, so jumping into this first invasion, we're going to be looking at two opponents that aren't super skilled. We have somebody fat rolling, so we instantly know that, you know, they're not super PvP optimized, but it is going to be useful to just look at this invasion for kind of how it goes down. So just kind of in the concept of spacing, I'm keeping my distance because I know that the weapons they're using are going to poise break me instantly, and I'm also trying to bait them behind me to get the gargoyle involved. And that's going to be the first kind of zoning tactic we see here is I would know that once the gargoyle is involved, they're going to want to go through that doorway. So what I do is I stun lock them and then rather than go for a hit immediately afterwards, I run in front of them and use the thunderstorm ash of war to prevent them from going through the doorway. And that means that they're in a tough spot where they're not able to get through the doorway even though that's where they want to go and they're going to take damage if they try to go through the doorway and they're going to take damage if they stay, you know, out of the doorway because the gargoyle is going to hit them. So next up we have kind of a nice spacing moment where we have an opponent go for a very predictable Ash of War. It's a two-part Ash of War, and one that I'm very familiar with, where they go for one swipe and then another swipe, and if you space your rolls appropriately and you kind of time that second roll so that you end up kind of at their back, it sets you up for a really nice backstab opportunity. And so that's what happens in that moment where I'm able to just kind of time each roll according to the rhythm and cadence of that particular Ash of War, and then space appropriately so that after my second roll I'm close enough to their back so that when they're coming out of that Ash of War animation I'm able to get the backstab and I repeat that process almost every single time that they go for that Ash of War. I don't always land it but it kind of depends on whether or not they hit me with that first initial stun lock. So if I time my first roll well enough to dodge that initial kind of swipe up with the scythe right there I'm usually in a pretty good spot to roll a second time and then set myself up for the backstab and so moments like that are going to be really important in terms of spacing and timing so kind of the big way to get better with spacing and timing is to play pvp and just pay attention to the rhythm and cadence of different weapons so both using and playing against different weapons 
is going to just inform you in terms of when you need to roll, when you have an opportunity, you know, maybe for a backstab, when you have a fraction of a second that you can deliver a light attack. Those things are all going to come into play. And as you play the game more, you're just going to internalize the kind of cadence of different attacks. So next up we have an invasion and I'm playing against somebody that's using a seppuku sword, which means I'm very likely to get hit with blood loss if I don't pay attention to my blood loss meter. And so here I notice that they're going for a lot of attacks and they're probably utilizing a lot of their stamina. So I go in for a quick attack there and then while they're in their Ash of War animation, I switch over to my menu and quickly grab a bleed ballast, which allows me to get rid of that kind of blood loss buildup and allows me to be aggressive. And so with that aggression, I'm able to land a jumping light attack, stun lock my opponent with a whip, and then come in for two more light attacks. And so utilizing the range of the whip when my opponent is a little bit further away means I'm able to stun lock them and then run forward and get light attacks, which a much shorter range weapon there. So being able to kind of utilize the different spacing associated with your weapons and knowing that you might be able to stun lock your opponent with a whip attack from range and then close that gap while they're in that stun locked animation is going to be extremely helpful. So that was one of the reasons that I set up this kind of goofier build is just using something with longer range and short range in tandem can really help you understand spacing and timing a little bit better because you're going to be utilizing the different facets of, you know, the faster weapon like the axe and the longer range weapon like the whip. And utilizing these two things together is gonna to be super helpful. So in this next invasion, I'm utilizing zoning as a tactic to kind of keep people in this hallway area. So there's PVP on one side, there's lava on the other, and I'm also dropping a lot of volcano pots. And roped volcano pots are a really fantastic way to keep an opponent in a certain area because running through that area is gonna cause them to take damage so they need to make a decision whether they want to take that damage or back off and even just forcing your opponent to make a decision will take time and often that will allow you to do something with that time because you know that they're going to have to make a decision and are going to have to spend some time thinking about it or kind of pay the consequences of taking damage in the process and that's going to give you some time to do anything it could be you know deliver a self up in some sort of form you know using something like bestial vitality to give yourself regen or it could be a way to switch to something with longer range if you have a bow or you know a jar cannon any of those things are going to be useful when you have a little bit extra space so just kind of keeping my opponents in this small confined area is going to be really beneficial because I have this Ash of War that if my opponents get caught in it are going to be stun locked continuously and frequently die. So that's kind of what happens there. And just looking at that again, we can see I'm rolling for both the times of both opponents attacking. So really being aware of my surroundings. And then here I kind of go in for a trade when I'm close to them. So I get very up close and personal, know that I'll have a little bit of hyper armor and then deliver the Thunderstorm Ash of War, which just combos both of them and allows me to win the invasion. So this next invasion is going to be a nice follow-up to the previous one, and because it's pretty short, we're actually going to rewatch the entire thing in slow motion. So first, I just kind of want you to take a look at the rhythm of this particular invasion, kind of some of the decisions that I make, and how they all come together. So you'll note that the initial part of this invasion, I played it a little bit passively, and kind of ran forward as well as ran away. So here we can see they use Wrath of Gold pretty quickly, and are also kind of continuously being aggressive. Between the different incantations and attacks with the katana, I have a strong feeling that I'm going to be able to kind of punish their aggression to some extent. And that's going to be a common theme throughout all invasions that you go for. So what I'm able to do is just kind of space the incoming attacks. And then when I think that they think I'm going to be running away, I go for my Ash of War Thunderstorm and kind of just catch every single person involved in it. So really understanding what your opponent thinks you're going to do is a huge part of kind of spacing and timing. So when your opponent is backing away, then you know that things are going to be a little bit more passive. And when your opponents are playing really, really aggressively, they are kind of anticipating that you're going to be running away. So if you stop running away, turn around and swing your axe or something, you know, going for that classic turn and burn, you're really going to be in a fantastic position to stunlock your opponent and deliver damage if you have a weapon that can stunlock your opponents. And with the Ashes of War that I used in that last invasion, I was in a very good spot to just kind of 
take advantage of their aggression, not get hit and not take too much damage in the process, and really deliver all the damage I needed to to win a 3v1. So this next invasion is also going to be a pretty good example of utilizing spacing and timing. So here we get an example of kind of understanding the attack animation associated with dual colossal swords and really punishing it with a backstab. So this is a more advanced technique, but it involves unlocking from your opponent, which allows you to turn around very quickly. So we kind of saw that in slow motion where I anticipated that they were going to go for an attack, rolled through it, and then immediately turned around to get the backstab. So Understanding, you know, the attack animation, the spacing required to put yourself in a position to be behind your opponent, and then kind of time that with the roll needed to dodge the incoming damage will really allow you to kind of space and time in kind of the synergy you need to deliver a backstab. So next up, we kind of have a moment where I understand the spacing required of my opponents and go for my Thunderstorm Ash of War. So the players switched over to fist weapons, which meant that they needed to be really close to me to deliver their attack. So to space that appropriately, I went for my Thunderstorm attack to kind of poise trade with them. Next up, we have a moment here where they've switched back to the dual Colossal Swords, and I've thrown a Frost Pot, which kind of adjusts their timing. So if they were going to go for a jumping attack earlier, the Frost proc meant that they couldn't go for it. They went for it a little bit late, and then that meant I could kind of back away and then with punish them. So when they went for the attack with the dual Colossal Swords, it was a little bit later than they wanted, and then... I kind of anticipated where they were going to be, spaced it accordingly, and then ran forward and was aggressive kind of timing-wise where I needed to be. And next up, the opponent does a great job here of switching up the incantations that they're going for and going for Shabira's Howl, which I was not anticipating at all, and I had incorrect spacing for that, so you saw me get the full madness build up, but then they roll off cliff, so it's okay. This next invasion is going to be a really interesting example of what to do when your opponents are going for very zoning intensive tactics so this is something you'll also commonly see in 3v1s when you invade and zoning based tactics can be extremely deadly especially in small spaces so if you're outnumbered and your opponents are only zoning that means it's gonna really take away a lot of your space and if you get kind of backed up into a corner then you're just going to die so the kind of different zoning tactics that they're going for are going to be dragon based incantations like dragon breath then they also have moon veil which covers a large aoe and it's both vertical and horizontal attacks are going to be very strong in terms of covering space and then they also have some spells that they're using which kind of cast a frostbite area so if you run through that area you're going to be taking damage and they also have madness incantations that take up a large space so this is kind of a difficult spot to be in as an invader when you're invading in something like the catacombs which really don't have a ton of space here i just want to note this moment where i delay the roll while i'm on the ground and wait for the incoming damage that I'm expecting from both the Dragon Bite and that Moon Veil attack. So there I could have rolled out earlier, but I kind of anticipated that those two spells and incantations were coming my way and decided that I wanted the iframes during the bulk kind of of those attacks. So rather than just rolling out immediately, having some patience in those moments and just kind of timing your roll appropriately can kind of save your life because those two things together, if they had hit me, probably would have killed me. So. Uh, what I need to do as an invader is get my opponents to change their tactics if I can. So what I do is kind of back off a little bit and do things that I think are going to annoy my opponents. And by annoying my opponents, I can hopefully bait them into more aggressive strategies that don't involve so much zoning and maybe will require a little bit more spacing and timing on their part. So I find that kind of just backing away and kind of taunting your opponent can be an effective way for them to change strategies. And if they just kind of come in hot and heavy, you know, anticipating that you're going to be playing more passively and they're not using the zoning tactics that they originally were, then you're going to be in a great spot to punish that aggression. 
And that's kind of what I'm doing here is just continuously throwing knives and then when I think that they're all going to get aggressive at the same time, then I go for the Thunderstorm Ash of War, which allows me to kill both phantoms and turn it into a one-on-one. -on -one. So kind of waiting out your opponents and being patient when they're using strong zoning based tactics can be useful. And what I do here is I switch over to a parry shield because Moonveil is something that can definitely be parried and is a good way to kind of handle that, but you really want to make sure that your timing is correct. So I go for one predictive parry. I think that they might roll and then attack, but they don't. So I switch my tactics again, especially because they're rolling out of most attacks and my whiffs with the ax just aren't cutting it. So switching over to something like the whip that has a slightly delayed and ranged attack is going to be a great way to throw off the timing of your opponent and take advantage of the spacing on your end. This next invasion is going to be an interesting example of dealing with both a host and an opponent, a uh, phantom rather, that are, you know, the host is fairly low level and not so much of a threat, and then the phantom is maybe a higher level and has more vigor and is just a little bit more tanky. And so I'm really focusing on killing just one opponent here, and that being the phantom. However, the host is in the process of delivering damage. So that's something that can be a nice way to kind of hone your skills is to just go for the host last because that can, it won't necessarily mean that you win more invasions, but it will mean that you need to kind of really strategize in terms of how you deliver damage, how you negotiate multiple opponents at the same time, and kind of how you just uh, address different certain circumstances. So this moment right here was one that I was really happy with because it kind of set up my opponent to be in a bad spot no matter what. So first I go for a fully charged heavy. Had they been really aggressive and just run into it, they would have gotten hit before they were able to deliver any damage. And then to kind of make up for the fact that I can really anticipate that they're gonna be aggressive, I go for an immediate parry afterwards and that catches their running heavy. So understanding the spacing of the situation, knowing that I had enough time to both go for a fully charged heavy and that if they were aggressive, they would get hit by the damage. And then if they were passive and went to follow it up with their own aggression, which was kind of part of the play style I understood them to have after just kind of the back and forths from earlier, I was able to punish that with a parry. So that's a really useful kind of moment there in terms of teaching and just a, a good tactic to be able to employ is to have a plan for both outcomes in a moment. So if you can space so that, you know, there's a high damage output regardless of what your opponent does unless they just play passively, then you're gonna be in a great spot to deliver damage pretty frequently. And part of understanding those moments are when, you know, the, the host wasn't playing a big factor in that moment. It was really just a one-on-one -on -one in that particular moment. So I was able to kind of pull off that parry, which, can be risky but also can be very doable if you have a very good inclination of when your opponent is going to attack you so i did manage to kill the host in the end there but really focusing on the phantom was useful in terms of just a learning moment so this next invasion is going to be mostly about timing and understanding when to attack so here i roll and then i don't attack immediately i wait a little bit and go for a running heavy and that confuses my opponent in terms of when they think they have priority. So they think they can go for Moonveil, but by the time they've already decided that they actually have priority, I've timed my running heavy attack to come in and deliver that damage. And then you'll also notice that the host here is using Raptors of the Mist, which is a great tool against predictable play styles. But what I'm doing again here is I'm delaying my attack. So you can see me just running into my opponent, not doing anything and waiting for them to do something. And that's a really hard play style to play against as any PVP player because you th are trying to wait for the natural cadence of the fight. You're waiting for your opponent to get out of a roll. You're waiting for them to kind of swing for a second time. But if you do something that feels kind of unnatural, like just run at your opponent for a second, it's a great way to be able to deliver damage. It can be a double-edged sword, but it can work out really well. So here we have a moment where my opponent is swinging multiple times, kind of trying to take advantage of priority. I'm able to roll out of the first one, take a little bit of space and then come in for a jumping attack that comes in over their attacks. So rolling is not the only way to dodge your opponent's attacks. And if you can kind of put in some nice jumping attacks. So there's another moment there where I jump over the swing of their attack and manage to land my own hit. And so understanding just that 
you can kind of time a jump appropriately, you can be aggressive in that moment. And then here I kind of follow up with, I, I guess a zoning tactic here where I take away all available space because they're fat rolling and I have an ash of war that takes up a bunch of space. So they're just not gonna be able to get away from it fast enough. This next invasion is gonna be just a nice example, I think of a lot of different moments of timing as well as some spacing. So here we have two players with some pretty aggressive weapons and the high damage per second that comes with dual curve swords is something to be definitely scared of and definitely something to respect. And then you also have a player with dual bloody helices, which cause blood loss buildup, and they also can, you know, just hit for a lot of damage. And I'm also in a confined area, so my opponents are doing a good job of taking up space. In this moment, I'd definitely like to draw some attention to. So I go for a jumping attack, manage to hit my opponent with the backswing, and have anticipated that I need to space for incoming attacks from the Phantom. And that's something that you'll really get a feel for over time, is even if your opponent is off screen, knowing to kind of predictive roll away and not continue to maintain aggression because you have somebody that's kind of coming at you from behind and if you can get a good feel for that and kind of you know easily switch from lots of aggression to rolling out of a situation where you anticipate kind of an aggressive phantom or something from behind you you're going to be in a really good spot to kind of space and time efficiently where you've spaced your initial attack correctly and then timed your kind of escape route out of that moment. So that was just one instance where I felt like that was pretty successful. This next build is gonna be dual dagger. So it's low poise damage and low range, which is fairly difficult. So what I need to deal with here is trying to get enough poise and just quick damage to get in hits. And so part of that is gonna be trading a little bit, but also timing my storm stomp attack as well as utilizing some of the other tactics I mentioned earlier, which is rolling into an attack and then timing a backstab accordingly. And at that point, I'm now in a one-on-one -on -one situation because I did get that backstab. And here we have an opponent that is playing fairly predictably with their falchion attacks, and I'm able to get a quick parry and just kind of utilize the high critical damage of the dagger build. So that's something that you're going to get a feel for over time more and more is just when you're opponents are playing really predictively and when you have moments like that to just take advantage of a kind of pause in the fight or a slow attack or just uh, a lot of r1 spam where you can you know deliver a parry or deliver a backstab you know based on what your opponent is doing so next up we have a duel and my opponent here is using a really strong setup and i'm using a fairly weak setup so i'm using dual flails which can deliver a decent amount of damage with jumping attacks, but they lack the range that, you know, some other weapons are going to have that are going to be better for jumping attacks. And my opponent's using, uh, you know, across Nabakiba uh, as well as lots of pyromancies, the uh, giant flame take thee, which is going to do a lot of damage. They're also going for flaming strike. So I'm kind of in a bad spot where I do need to really just appreciate the tactics that my opponent's are using so i'm spacing them a little bit differently than i might a different opponent where i'm trying to give myself time to react to anything that they send my way because in the first half of this fight i lose a lot of health just kind of playing aggressively so being able to change your timing and spacing based on the build that you're playing against is going to be really helpful and this is kind of allowed me to you know back off get a feel for what they're going for and when they switch over to a nabakiba and go for some ashes of war that are predominantly horizontal attacks i'm able to kind of grab some jumping attacks and there they do a great job of switching to something with an overhead attack which kind of nerfs my ability to go for jumping attacks as often but I'm able to kind of time my final jumping attack as a roll catch there, which demonstrates the necessity of learning how to not panic roll because had they gone for just a single roll there, I wouldn't have been able to hit them and they would have been able to react to my jump attack. This final duel is just gonna be a quick example of kind of putting together all the different skills we've talked about and utilizing them against a player that might not be too PVP optimized. So really what way happens here is we have a very predictable Ash of War that they go for and I'm able to combo that into some really aggressive attacks and then just kind of space their incoming attacks with their Colossal Sword by standing away from them rather than rolling out of it and then switching over to a parry shield, understanding that you can parry a one-handed Colossal Sword 
and running in and following that timing up with just anticipation of the first two swings that they use. So putting everything together is gonna be really useful in terms of timing, spacing, and zoning, and really gonna up your game in terms of how successful you are in PVP. But it's a lot and it takes a lot of time, so really practice is gonna be the best way to understand these concepts in the long run. As always, if you made it this far, I just wanted to say thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate everybody's support. I also wanted to mention that I don't typically do these in-depth videos about specific topics related to PvP. My channel is much more focused on just running specific builds and taking a look at how they fare within the context of PvP. So if you like this more introductory-based content where we take a deep dive on something PvP-related, definitely let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear back from just anybody who's watching this. And yeah, that's all I've got, so I hope you have a good one.